Welcome to the Helping Homes Find Their People podcast. I'm here with the Galuzzo team with Chris, Elena, and Christo. Today we're going to be talking about foreclosures. Yahoo and a couple of other major media sources just said that the Fed's going to keep interest rates high and also that there's an increase in foreclosures around the nation. Yes, absolutely going to happen. We saw it. Uh, we met with a person that handles uh, foreclosures and tax liens, and he showed us how many are coming in the pipeline, uh, with many more coming in each neighborhood. And I'm not talking about poor neighborhoods. We're talking about every neighborhood. And we're going to try to help these people out um, of the funk that they're in, because it's really um, going to affect the economy. And we need the Galuzzo team needs to help them. We need to be involved. We need to help them get out of the situation they're in. Most of the people do have equity, which is good, um, but they don't really know exactly how to handle it. And we have a team that we're putting together that will be able to negotiate with the bank or the lender, the lending institution, and hopefully uh, get penalties waived and other things that get thrown in there once they file the foreclosure petition. So we're hoping that we can help people out very greatly. So that's uh, important to us right now. And, you know, once we help these people, we'll be able to also help them sell the house or, you know, consolidate their mortgage and even do some loan mods, potentially, loan modifications. So we're hoping to help a lot of people out that are going to be struggling in the near future. Yeah, the foreclosures is a high tension, um, very emotional sa sale because you know, usually they don't want to sell and you know, they stop paying either the mortgage and a couple of things have happened throughout their life and they need some true guidance and the ability for somebody else to kind of help them. For those people who do want to sell, that that will open up a whole new set of investors being able to purchase some homes that's been lacking because we haven't had, there's been very spotty homes for the investors to come back into the market and the first time home buyers again will start creeping in from the covid days they'll be back but so it'll give out you know opportunities also for those buyers and the nice thing with foreclosures the if you're a first time home buyer or if you're a purchaser purchasing your primary residence regardless your the bank gives you 30 days to compete with just you know first time home buyers or purchasers for your primary home and yes contractors or investors or anybody else has to wait 30 days until they can actually put their offers in true that true that so it actually helps everyone else get in first and and decide if they yes. want to actually go through with the process oh. and sure one other item that was interesting is Barbara Corcoran is saying this is the best time to buy in years because once the interest rates do go down, which they're predicting the rates go down in the next year, down to five, five and a quarter, five and a half, if they do, she's saying that the prices are going to escalate greatly. So if you're in the market right now and you're looking for deals, this is a good time to buy. So that was interesting too. So there's two different uh, takes on it. Takes on the market right now, one from... Well, we know personally that we've seen how many foreclosures are being filed in all areas of Long Island. But Barbara Corcoran has a nice national feel, and she's saying to everybody, and she's you know fairly well known, obviously, that it's time to buy. So uh, the sellers should put their houses on the market. They should be prepared. It's uh you know even whether you're in a foreclosure, when you're sideways, whether you're in a short sale situation this may be the best time that you can move forward. Yes, because you won't be competing with all those foreclosures too. So you'll be selling a nicer product or not that the foreclosures won't be nice products because they'll be a whole mix of them. But yeah, the, that competition won't be there yet. The sooner that they actually get ha get that handled, the easier their whole entire life will be. It, you know. Right, and, and when you're getting foreclosed too, the banks do offer buyouts. Um, they do take... You can get uh, some money um, to relocate. The banks would like to do workouts. Um, you know, I've uh, looked at into buying deeds so I can take a position over if it makes sense. Our group may want to take a position over even before we sell it. 
and then negotiate with the bank directly so the person that's in the home doesn't have to do that. And we're also looking to commercial um, foreclosure assets because the commercial market's really, really hurting right now. The office buildings across America now, you're going to see waves and waves of foreclosures going on. You're going to see the multi-unit sector of the market getting foreclosed on um, all over all over America and Long Island specifically. You're going to see a lot of foreclosure actions being filed on the and, and in Brooklyn and Queens. That, that's where you're going to predominantly see it, but other areas also. So we have to be on the uh, we have to be on the look for all these deals. So if anybody has any friends, relatives that you know that need some help. We are experts in the business, and we'd love to help your families out, your friends out that are uh, unfortunately in a, in a predicament that they don't know how to handle, and we are experts in it, and we have a good team. Besides us, there is a man that's very expert in negotiations with banks. He's presently working on a $150 million loan, trying to get it down to $80 million. Uh, through negotiations because the office buildings are not as strong as they were. So we're trying to do these negotiations, and he's part of our team. So it's interesting. And um, basically everyone should just reach out to a professional no matter what, and especially if you know you don't want to tell your family or you know your friends what's going on with your situation, always just reach out to a professional, um, especially if you're not – if you're listening from not from Long Island, uh, per se, we can you can still contact us. We'll get you in touch with people that can help you the most nationwide. Um, but always just reach out. We're a phone call away, and we can definitely help you. But um, on on another note, um, the Fed is keeping interest rates high because of more of like the foreclosures, and they don't want everything to go out go out All at crazy. Once. Because mm -hmm. once they lower interest rates, then everyone's going to start buying up again like crazy. And then the prices, like Barbara Corkin was saying, is going to go super high. Yeah, I don't see And then I, I, we already see prices going up super high regardless. It's, it's almost insane what's happening. Yeah, in my networking group this morning, I had a 7 o'clock in the morning discussion. And basically every group that is in the networking group, whether it's clothing whether it's blinds and curtains, uh, flooring, insurance, everyone across the board is raising their prices. There is not one group that is lowering prices or holding prices steady. Every single group is raising prices, car insurance, home insurance, accounting. It's just a steamroll right now. The government has to figure out how to stop this inflation and they think raising the rates slows down the real estate market, which it does, and it's very much hurting the real estate market, which in turn is also slowing cash flow for other groups. The only good news is the construction market is improving because people are not moving. They're staying in their homes, so there is definitely um, renovations going on. So it's an interesting dynamic. You know, One group is is not doing well, and the other groups are seem to be pick up, picking up, but we'll see where it plays out in the next few months. Let's veer off of foreclosures right now because I feel like I'm getting a little upset about it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all every every market's fine. Like we, we you, you coast through every market. Yes, it it straightens itself out. Yeah, but I kind of I'm starting to feel bad for everyone. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah, now it's uh, we, we always say that there are three nightmares for home sellers uh, well there's three nightmares that people talk about divorce death and selling a home so put that it's the hardest put that things on to yeah, go the through. hardest things and and put that into a mix where you don't really want to go you have no choice and it's even uh, harder so we're going to try to help we're going to really give a great effort on mm -hmm. trying to do workouts for people and if there is no workout then we're going to help them sell their home and move on and uh you know, yeah. help them with the relocations and everything. So, And people who are really interested in selling their houses right now and always ask us what to do about them renovation-wise in order to get, get them above and beyond the other people. We have a house right now that is pretty 
um, original, but they did do the two bathrooms. And I have to say that, and they updated the kitchen just a little bit and kept the house clean and neat, painted, new rugs, um, but same footprints as, you know, it was built in the 60s, still, still needs a new roof. But I, I, we're getting a great response because those two bathrooms are done. Mm -hmm. So it's funny because if the, they were the original blue tiled bathrooms, when we, got, when we met with them, that was the blue tiled bathroom. Yes. They made it that be beautiful white and, and gray and gorgeous. And then they did the other bathroom too and updated the, the kitchen a little bit. And we are getting a great response on that house. So you're basically saying bathrooms. And yes. Kitchen so if somebody is looking to sell return, and, yeah. and you know, you have, you have a foreclosure going on and you do want to make a little bit more, you know, you want to sell it for a little higher price. The, the bathrooms and the kitchen, you don't even have to redo a whole kitchen. Just spruce it and then keep everything clean and neat. And try if you have a, an old rug that's stained, put replace it. Put a new rug. Uh, you know, those those little things make a difference. Clean, clean even um doors. Everybody always forgets to clean doors and light switches. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, that's the good news because we're seeing a lot of activity right now. Yeah. We even have a house that needs to be fully gut renovated and we're getting activity on it. And it's in Dix Hills, half all the hill schools on a beautiful acre of land. And we're getting activity. We have an offer pending. So even on fixer uppers, people are actually active now yes, because yes. there's so little inventory. And the numbers we're getting are fantastic. So uh, we're excited about the market. We just picked up about six new listings. Mm -hmm. So this is an exciting time for us. Uh, we're hoping to pick up at least two more in the next 10 days. Um, you know, all, Well, we have two more shore. going on the on the market Yeah. tomorrow when the Park, pictures are done. Yep. Deer Park, Syosset. We have one coming in, hopefully, uh, Brightwaters. We have one coming in Dix Hills. It's nice. It's, mm -hmm. uh, and we're spreading ourselves out, too, because we have Old Brookville. We have, uh, you know, pretty much Nesconset. It's it's fun. It's fun um, getting out there and really hitting the market all over Long Island. We can handle any area, which is fantastic, and help out these sellers. Because we're, we're very good at the negotiation process. We're good at getting these agents really good numbers. And uh, that's why they're choosing us and working with us so positively. Mm -hmm. And going back to the renovation talk um, regarding, you know, if you do redo the kitchen or you if you redo the, the bathroom, if you're in a foreclosure, you might not have the cash to do that. But if you work with the Gluzos or uh, any compass, compass agent, um, we have Compass Concierge where they we will be able to foot that renovation f beforehand and then you will get the payment at the closing. Right. So and there's no you, interest. Yeah, no interest. So there's no interest. You just lend the money outright and the, the renovation gets finished. And that's... That's a huge deal. And yeah, you get so the money Compass, back? Compass fronts the money as long as they get the listing, obviously. Of right. course. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, you'd have to <laughs> yeah, you'd find have the to paper list. after that. Yes. <laughs> and then at the sale, that's when you pay the you pay Compass back. And I think it's a fantastic opportunity. I mean, the return on investment is huge. Mm -hmm. It is. Makes your, makes, it only, it's only works if you're willing to live or you're not living in that you, the house at that time for that renovation to go on. Um, but if it's like one bathroom, definitely should take advantage of it for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you invest twenty thousand through Com Compass Concierge, you you potentially can get fifty thousand back mm -hmm. just because of those those renovations. And also the like I said, it's like the the neat and clean homes tend to go get the most action because they the the buyers can see themselves in it they don't need they can see that they can that they're serious buyers they don't have to take a lot of stuff out and they can see themselves in it them you know because there's just the space and they can see what they're buying too they can see the walls the floors the windows not too much is distracting them yeah not uh the dust bunnies yes distracting them 
Yeah. So <sighs> what? What was so the what else? What did you do how this weekend? Ryan, I was. How uh, does Ryan Serhan talk, talk about all these crazy stories that no one's gonna? I know, right? <laughs> he tells good stories. Oh, does yeah, he does, he right? Does tell, he great tells great stories. But what were, were you gonna say? How was Montauk? Montauk was fantastic. What was going yeah. on out there? Was it busy? It was very busy. Um, we went to Surflage and okay. hung out over there. And my friend knew the DJ and we partied all night. And uh, weather was decent. It was kind of cold out. but So everyone kind of went inside the, and danced and did their thing. And we didn't make it to Montauk Brewery, but we'll go there next time. Ah, Montauk Brewery. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and you also got some mussels off of the dock. Oh, that was yeah. cool. I mean, we do that every year now. So we go underneath the dock and get all the mussels together, and and we basically cook ourselves mussels. And it's like if you went to a restaurant in Montauk, and a full bowl that size would be at least two hundred dollars. At mussels. least. And uh, the yeah, very least. I got the surfboards and paddle boards all prepared, and get ready still for have summer. To fix a couple of the holes and dents that our guests and ourselves have made and uh yeah it's, it's fun montauk is just a great spot well even beyond that now we're actually going to start working in montauk so i'm talking yeah. to the manager of montauk's office and the gluzo is going to be working it out of montauk we're gonna I, get access i was to literally office. i was literally there on a sunday and i was like there's no one in the office it's locked yeah yeah i would have and everyone's out I yeah. would have had the table. So that's right what we're there. gonna do. We're gonna go out there. Oh my gosh! I was like, oh my god! We put a table. Get a, you get some you of those compass blankets there. and. Oh my god! It, sell those and everyone charity. Everyone in the village on Sunday. It was like we have to be there. Yeah. So you'll we see the Galuzos in Montauk. <laughs> that's the next horizon for the Galuzos. You'll see us at Ditch Plain surfing and everything, hanging out. That's right. That's right. You'll always see us bike riding through town. And uh, we love it up there. So if anybody does have any people that want to look in Montauk. Yeah, that's, that's going to be our be new venue. The new venue for the Galuzos. We already go out there for the last at least eight years we've had a place. We enjoy it. We love it. We know all the restaurants. We know all the people that live there. We know all the real estate. So we'd uh, love to represent anybody in Montauk. That would be uh, exciting. Yeah. Exciting. Um, we already have somebody. So Yeah. And I'm going to be fishing out there in July. For some nice striped bass. I can't wait for that. It's, it's always exciting. We go out. Uh, my friend's been going for, uh, I think, 42 years with his group, and I'm part of the group. So uh, I've only been going for the last six years, but it's a really great day. We rent uh, two charter boats and have a great time. Great time. Last year, we all caught beautiful keepers. You can't catch too big out in striped bass land out there because it's uh, they don't want you to catch too big. They want you to release those. And then too small, you have to release them. So we're, we're catching right in the middle. And uh, we all got keepers, and we had a great meal that night. Everybody was excited. It's just it's just wonderful. And all the Comac people that we grew up with are out there in that same week. And it's a very fun time. Now these young kids that started going when they were 13, they're now 20, 21, 22. And yep. It's uh, nice to see them all grown in college or graduated college. And they're all going to Memory Motel. <laughs> and they're yeah, going, hanging and out at Memory Motel. <laughs> and they're going to party. And the and the points is across the street, the right? Point, yeah, the right? point, yeah. The point, yeah. I mean, everyone goes from hopping the streets. Yes. Uh, I love Montauk Village. It's great. It's fun. Yeah, so that's the next destination. Yep. Next best thing. Let's get it. Let's rock and roll there. We'll hang out at the Memory Motel with a big table in front. No way. <laughs> that, that place gets a little rowdy. Well, Mom and I had one of the we best We went nights. there one night, and the, the, the guy was so... So what happened was Carly said she was there. So Carly's our 26-year-old daughter. Carl, so me, time. Dad, and our friend um, Jimmy decide we're going to go meet them, meet her and her friends. So she's... We get to the memory hotel and the line is out the door. The place is packed to the rafters. It's all 20 year olds. And this guy, this my age, Let's is be here, staring they at were me. Over 20. Oh, they were old. They were, they were definitely over 20. So that we don't get the memory motel in trouble. And th well, 20 year olds. <laughs> you said 20 year olds. That could be 20 to 30. Up, usually. Everybody was 20, 20 to 30. Yeah. I mean, Carly was 26, so she's not hanging out at no teeny bopper place. <laughs> but the, the, 
bouncer is staring at me as I'm looking for Carly like this. And he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm looking for my daughter. I'm, I'm looking for my daughter. We're here to torture her. He's like, well, these kids have been torturing me all night. So come on in. <laughs> so me and dad and, and Jimmy go into this place and now we're hanging out outside and we're like, we can't find her. She's like, well, get on, go on inside. Nobody could get inside. And there we are, we're bumper to bumper with these people. Like we couldn't even move. And I had my new shoes on. They were getting all wet and gross. But as we're going through, we're at every corner. We end up all the way in the corner of the bar and we're hanging out with these, we've, these kids are like, oh my God, what are you guys doing here? They couldn't like believe their mom and dad were here. So they couldn't, they were like, let's buy you guys drinks. You're so cool. You're so cool. So I'm like, we're drinking. We're hanging out with these kids. And I tell them, Jaeger call Meisters Carly. And I'm like, shots. call, give Carly a call. Where is she? She's got to be in here. We went to every corner. I don't see her. So he puts the phone up and he's like, calls Carly. And we're like, where are you? We're here. We're here. She's like, where are you? We're like, we're at the memory motel looking for you. She's like, we couldn't get in. Uh. <laughs> Oh my it goodness. It was hilarious. Yeah. So all of our friends are back at the condo and we're partying at the Memory Hotel. It and was hilarious. People are dropping beers on oh us my God. because the, everybody holds their beers above it their heads. So it was so funny. Yeah, trying to get out. It was so packed. So they hold it their beers and drinks above their heads. So much fun. But we were there for like an hour and a half before we even left. We're like, yes. forget Carly. We had a ball. Yeah. I've definitely yeah. been to the Memory yeah. Hotel a couple of times. That was a ball. Yeah, we had fun when she when she was screaming that she couldn't get in, and then we went. We were like showing her all the people we were with. It was hilarious. She had so, it was so much fun. That was a good night. We do have a bunch of connections in Montauk though to get into clubs, which is fun. Yeah, yeah, so that's we, nice. We do uh, love the fact that all our kids can get into nightclubs when they're out there. Like <laughs> Uncle Uncle Ray's sloppy tune. Now it's oh, bounce. Now bounce. Yeah, yeah, and it's beautiful out there. Fun, fun stuff. Mem yeah. I have a memory of the memory motel. Good memory. But yeah. More to make this summer. Mm -hmm. The market's very good out there as far as for real estate, too. It's exciting. I mean, there's very little inventory there, yeah. too. But one thing they did note is that the rental market has slowed down. That's All the true. Hampton That's rental true. market now slowed down, which is interesting. So get cold. out there. Time to go. I mean, it is older. still June. Yeah. It is still June. Once July hits. Yeah, yeah. crazy. Uh, I mean, we were out there this weekend, and it was it was known there's no way you're going to hang out outside. It was just too cold. Too cold? Way too cold. Like the winds. And oh, yeah, everything. yeah. Yeah. It's nicer in, we stayed in Bridgehampton uh, two weeks, 